Isis Linda West. I have another uh, comparing video. I am going to compare the three uh, cases that I have. They're in the $2,000 range. We have the um, BAM Slim 2.9. We have the Musilia S3. And we have the Eastman Strings um, K4. These are all very lightweight cases. This is an ABS case with that tri shell design. This is carbon fiber and carbon fiber. Similar to my other video, but these are the higher end cases that are lighter weight. Okay, we're going to do a visual comparison side by side. So you can check out the profiles of each. And you can kind of get an idea of the mass if you want to buy a playing ticket for your cello and stick it in the seat next to you, you can see that the slimmer cases might be a little easier. This case is a little um, fuller, but it works well for some of the broader patterns, maybe not a Matignana, a really big Matignana, but it will work well for a, a Guarneri or, or a, a cello that maybe the neck angle or scroll is a little larger. I noticed that on some of these two cases, the scroll may actually touch. Uh, at least on my daughter's cello it did, and on this one she had plenty of room, so we chose this one. And come back around to the front, and one more front shot. Okay, now we want to look at the texture of these cases. They're all very different. We'll start with the K4. Zoom in here on the balance on the edge work. And this has a visible carbon fiber cloth, and it has a real matte finish. This particular case, they call it the camouflage, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of artsy. It has little, little uh, splashes of primary colors and secondary colors. It's not really like military camo, I would call it. It's more of an, an artsy kind of look, but it's predominantly black. Matte. There's a little bit of a speckle look to it, black on black. Uh, looking over here at the S3, this case is different from the other two Musilia cases in that the way it closes, we've got a gloss finish, but the closure is different. The, um, it's kind of like a clamshell closure, like the Accord, yet it has this thin, small, Valance, this rubber seal, uh, that helps the case close easier and line up easier than the Accord might and gives you a pretty good seal. You just trim and weight on that, and I think that's why they designed it like that. Now with the BAM, this has kind of this uh, satin finish, it's not really matte, it's not really gloss, it's sort of a satin finish. has the valance, has kind of a satin feel. And this is one of their newer blue colors. It's sort of a slate blue. I'm going to go down now, and we're going to examine the flex in the back of the case. We talked about the importance of this not having a lot of flex in the back of the case and making sure that your cello isn't touching the back of the case or the inside. It's pretty rigid. It has this uh, molded form here that helps give it some stiffness. There's very minimal flex, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. I think all of them behave similar. The Musilia also has that convexed surface, so it gives it some rigidity. Same thing, maybe a slight bit of movement, but so minimal that it would be fairly safe. Now the Eastman is, has a pretty flat back, but the material is very strong and it too is very stiff. It's probably the stiffest of the Musilia cases, although there is definitely maybe 3 30 seconds of a movement, maybe about a 30 second more than the other two cases. Now we're going to look at its stability of each case. Let me give this little room here. So here's the Eastman. It, it tends to look like maybe, and it's pretty stable for how light it is. The Musilia tends to look like it wants to lean forward. They tend to want to roll forward, if anything. Fairly stable on the push backwards, but front way it would go. 
It's a typical on the Musilia, a very light case, so it's even, even more vulnerable to being bumped over. I think the BAM's really stable for how light it is. It's pretty much equally tendent to go front or back. So, again, we talked about leaving uh, cellos inside of standing cases is not generally a good idea. So, I don't advise it. People tend to want to do it anyway. So, we cover that topic. And we have the inside here. I want to just show you how the uh, case behaves open. So there's a little bit of wiggle, but you know, it could be it could be worse considering how light this case is. It's not much worse than some of the other single wall cases. Seems fairly stable. I like the latches. Notice the latches on this case are different from the other uh, Eastman cases. The K3 and the K1 case has a different front and it has similar latches to what the Musilia has, which I like a lot. Lighter weight, it's kind of easier to open. A little spring spring la latch action, so you can kind of do it with one hand easily. Ah, oh, we got pads in here, backpack straps. Okay. Opens kind of wide, so it's definitely not a stable case when it's open. It's got a lot more movement. You know, but it'll do. It'll stand. I just won't leave my cello in there with it open or closed, standing. We move on over to Bam. I miss one, or is it just the Latch is behaving funny. They do that sometimes. Oh, I missed one. This one would tend to want to fall forward with it open. So, for how light it is, uh, having that foam core does make it stiffer. It's definitely thinner than the. 3.5, they're trying to shave weight, trying to shave mass, but it's a pretty easy to close, case to close. Um, you want to also check out the weight. These are all the supposed lightweight cases. Let's see um, if they're as light as they advertise. That's always fun. Okay, we're going to make some space here and start weighing these cases. Start with the BAM. Interesting. Seven point seven. The first one I got in here was actually five point five. So I guess I've gained some weight. Okay, I thought it was worth mentioning that the K four has two colors, and this is the the black, the matte black with uh, no color. The texture of the the fiber uh, the cloth is a little tighter, so it's a different kind of look. That's a coarser cloth. It's a tighter weave. And the other thing that I noted, um, because when I was weighing the colored K4, I noticed it was a lot heavier than when I weighed the black. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that the matte black 
is, even though they're the same case name, we actually have two different animals here. So Wing the Black, um, I find we have a two pound difference. So the black is 5.7. So this is a really light case. And uh, it's worth noting. It's got the 5.7 on that one, so this is the lightest of the three. Okay, we're going to uh, talk about the hardware now for each case. Latches. I'm going to come down in here and look at the BAM latch. Uh, it's the same latch that BAM always uses. And when I talked about some of, the, some of the problems that can arise with this style of latch, with a spring, um, detaching, but again, you can replace the latches. Down here we have a handle that is plastic with a kind of a rubber material for the grip. And it has kind of a sliding hinge motion for picking up. We have the rubber valance that interlocks and seals it from weather. We have attachment points for the shoulder straps. We'll talk about the shoulder straps at the end of this section. And we have these broader hinges. It's pretty much the same hardware that you find on the other BAM high tech cases. So they didn't do anything with that to reduce weight. Every, all the weight reductions happened in the shell. I think the ABS is thinner and the foam is not as thick. Moving on over to the Musilia. Same draw latches that they have on their other cases. You really have to be attentive with this case to make sure that the edge and everything's lining up before you latch it. It lines up pretty good. We'll look at that in a bit. This is the same handle as the other Musilias. The caveat is that this uh, attachment point is actually square uh, profile metal and that those little corners on this metal actually start wearing into this leather loop here that's riveted to the case. Again, I've been able to get replacement handles, drill these out and re-rivet new ones on. So it's not too bad, but you know, it's, it's a job. If you carry a lot by the handle, uh, that's definitely something you'll have to do. Uh, again, the attachment points for the straps is the same, where it's built in, reinforced, and then you have basically webbing that they provide. We'll go over that. Hinges. Have these four bumpers to set it down on. And these, these are tied into the hinge. They're a pretty narrow hinge, but it's fairly beefy. It's got some thickness to it. And we'll move on over to the K4. Now this is the new latch for the Eastman. Similar design to the Musilia, the draw latch, it has a pretty good action and it is, you can undo it with one hand. It takes a little effort to put it back together. Same kind of valance as the BAM, a little bit thinner. A leather handle, uh, again this tends to be a spot that wears is where the leather handle attaches to the ring, at least this attachment point's like a round and not a square off or a rod. And these can be replaced. D-rings, pretty small contact points. But I have not heard of them pulling away. The case is so light, it doesn't seem to wear and tear too bad. Hinges, fairly minimal width, again trimming weight. But they seem to do the job. The metal's not super thin. 
It's got some meat to it, and uh, we've got the four bumpers. Now we're going to go back and we're going to go over the what they provide for shoulder straps. It comes with the case. This is pretty much the stock shoulder straps that you get with any Eastman case. If they wear out, I can usually get replacements for you at no charge. You just pay for shipping. They're just your typical your clips. They swivel. The pads um, slide up and down. Miss the part against your shoulder. Not, not much padding at all. So they're not real cushy. They're adjustable in length. Just kind of simple. Um, we're going to move over to the BAM next because I wanted to talk a little more in length with the Musilia. BAM also is your typical BAM straps. They're trying to improve them, these carabiners. Notice now that they have them tucked in behind this elastic so that the um, the shoulder pad was kind of like neoprene rubber on this side, but uh, so it doesn't scratch the case. I have a BAM and it's getting kind of beat up and scratched up by the carabiner. Um, they also put this tubing on there that helps keep the metal uh, cushion from damaging the case. One of the things you got to watch out for is this uh, this latch I've seen kind of accidentally open. So you got to make sure that. This is all the way up, and it's aluminum, and it kind of vibrates and rattles loose. I always put a drop of Loctite on, and then tighten them all the way up. And that, it's breakable, it's, re it's removable, but it locks it in place. It's like a thread lock. Um, that's what I do because I don't want it to fall off my back when I'm carrying it. And they too are adjustable, and they got carabiners on the bottom as well with the same type of attachment point latch with the aluminum knurled nut that locks it in place. Now the Musilia comes with the webbing and this webbing you can buy this kind of webbing if you ever needed to but they come with a custom one that starts wide and gets narrow. So this wide one will loop in either here and the narrow ones will loop in through the bottom and come back, return into these webbing, these webbing clips. And so there's really no metal against your, these are metal, but there's no metal against your case because they're, the strap is up against the case, so they don't get scratched. And you have a really broad attachment point. I really like that. These are the shoulder straps. and. Uh, this is kind of their old style. They actually have a new style now. I don't know which I like better. I haven't really decided yet. I think they could come up with a third style that's better than both. The Velcro's on, slides up and down. That goes against your shoulder right there. Now, in addition to this, this comes with the case, but you can also purchase a system. If you want to do some heavy trucking with your case, you can purchase the Comforts backpack system. I guess some people actually ride their bikes with these, but you know, that's some people. Um, heavy padded straps. It attaches in uh, a couple points. There's a waistband. There's a... Um, this cushion goes against your lower back to hold the case away from your body. It also does as a seat cushion, a wedge seat cushion. And then this doubles as a small accessory pouch for your pencil, mute, things like that. And then you also have a large music pocket that will hold most music books. Maybe not your orchestra folder. So it might be might be big enough, I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. So that also can be purchased separately. The um, other case that you can do a similar system by purchasing a uh, feather, it's made in Germany, it's a, it's a heavy duty rucksack backpack setup similar to that with 
You can get it with or without the waistband. You can get it with or without the music pocket. And there has to be some modifications done to your case. You actually have to uh, drill it and add D-rings to it, which I can do for a little bit of extra money, or you can look online and get instructions to do it. So that can be done and retrofitted this case. In the case of BAM, they have a, a music pocket that's padded. It doubles as a seat cushion. It has Velcro straps that hooks into each one of these D-rings. And it, and it um, helps hold the case away from your body when you're walking so it's not hitting your legs. I have one of those for my band when I'm doing music festivals in the summertime and I'm doing a lot of walking around with my cello. <clears throat> and so it's just sort of an addition. And you probably could actually um, attach the uh, feather system to this. But you have to be careful because you cannot drill ABS. You actually have to uh, burn the hole through it. You have to have a special tool for doing that. So I don't suggest... Uh, doing it yourself unless you really know what you're doing. And uh, we'll talk about the inside next. Okay, we're going to look at the interiors of the three cases and make some comparisons. The S3 has one key thing that's different from the other two Musilias, and that's the way it closes. The um, lip is a clamshell fitting, and we have this groove here that the um, lid fits into and seals. So the lid has this bead of um, vinyl or some sort of material like that sealed around it so it's not sharp, doesn't have carbon fiber edge there, and that will actually seat inside of that groove I just showed you when it closes. And it also helps it line up and close a little easier than an accord would. We're going to come in here and look at the scroll loop. This is just basically a nylon webbing. It's not, um, doesn't have a buckle or an adjustment. It doesn't have any elasticity to it. But it's sort of cheap insurance. You can still plop it over your scroll, and then when you undo this next strap, your cello doesn't just fall out. So it's good to use it. We're going to go on down to the next strap and see that it has a, a metal support with a pad on it for su supporting and backing up the neck. Then we have this Velcro strap with a pad on it that closes. And I've seen this Velcro wear out. It's, there's not much of it. That's probably why. It's only about three quarters of an inch wide and about two inches long. And then the fabric is about, about the same. And it just doesn't last that long. So you may have to sew more in or, or get creative with, with that repair when that happens, because it will. Moving down, we have the limiting strap up here, so it doesn't get caught. Sometimes when on the bottom, they get caught during closure. That prevents you from opening it too far. We have some uh, upper belt pads. We have the shaped neck button pad, which seats the cello well. You have to adjust the case to fit into that. We're going to come over here to the bow pocket. Again, it's the same as the others. It's a closed. It's closed, and uh, the bow cannot jump out. I'm going to get over here so you can actually see it. So we have this Velcro, but it's sewn at the top. So if you're bouncing around, the bow just can't jump out of the bottom pocket like the the single band that, let's say, the um, Eastman case might have. Working our way down. We have our accessory pocket here, laying on its side, so this is kind of a, similar to the band design. So when you open it up, it closes pretty good, um, but stuff could kind of slide to the bottom and, and little things could fall out of there. I have that problem with my band pouch. Coming further down, we actually have these removable pads, so you can adjust it to fit your cello. Depending on if you have a really wide lower bout or narrow one, you can move them up or down. And the bottom is the same as the other museum is. Again, you have these adjustments. Again, if you have the room, if your, if your cello is at 30 inches tall, let's say it's uh, 29 and a half, you can actually add a little padding here, um, which helps cushion it from that potential hard spot from these. They're spring, they, they claim they're spring-loaded, but you notice that this spot is still 
rigid. So if it takes a hard fall, it's nice to cushion this. That'll lift the cello up and so it seats into that top, top neck pad. These back cushions keep your cello off the back so there's no blows to the back of the cello. So it's pretty secure in this case. Once you get it all fitted in, it doesn't move around. And uh, for a five and a half pound case, I think it's a pretty darn good case for protection. With a few little modifications, it's even better. Now we have the K4. Again, I talked about they having a little more room back here for a larger scroll. It has the elastic loop. They do wear out, but you could replace them. It has the Velcro attached pouch that just actually just sticks to the inside of this fabric. Pretty much Velcro will stick inside of here, so you can do any kind of modifications with padding. This is also a Velcro secure neck block. This neck block is a little squishier than the Musealia one, and there's a little bit more generous amount of Velcro material, so it may wear out, but it might take a little longer than Musealia's. The caveat is the bow holder. <coughs> I'm not too happy with these, as we have that loop. The bow is free to jump and can free itself from down there. And then you got your cello scratched. So don't bounce it around too much when you're walking around. It has a shaped pad in the back. There's no adjustments to this case, so either your cello fits really great or, or you have to make little modifications to it if it's short. Bottom pads look like they support it well close to the block, which is nice. Metal plate for the end pin, tail piece pad. Pretty much bare bones. Lip closure is the same. We have seven latches on this as well as the Uzuya. Five on the band. So, band. This one's a little bit different from the other band compact. It has. This pad is Velcroed in. The top loop is the same as the 3.5 with the webbing, but I just want to show you this feature because you can actually move this up and down to fit your case, or I mean your fit your cello. No neck block. Same buckle feature. Work our way up. Same strap that's adjustable. Now, this is different for BAM. They've got their accessory pocket up here now, whereas the uh, 3.5 has it like the Musilia is on its side. So, if you have a problem with that, this is kind of nice. Moving down to the bow holders, similar to Musilia. Sewn at the top, keeps the bow from jumping out. That's a good feature, like that. Very minimal, slick fabric that just trims some weight. Move on down to the bottom. This one's full support on the, on the end pin block. You have this little elastic loop that goes around the end pin. Most people don't use it, but it's a good idea to use it if you um, are traveling in your your, your cello will be jostled around a lot. I would hook it on. There's a divot for the end pin, but there's nothing to it. I would think you'd want a piece of plastic or metal in there to help protect your case. So I guess you could probably cut some thin piece of plastic from a water bottle or something and just glue it down there. That might, if you like to put your end pin in your case without a rubber tip, you're going to tear that up. So you'll have to do something or, or start using a rubber tip. You have the same pad for the uh, tailpiece down here. But when it closes, it pushes against the tailpiece, holds your cello in place. And pretty, pretty minimal, but nicely, nicely finished. Probably the BAM is the cleanest looking interior. That does it for this comparison. Hope that helps.